UKIP are urging the government to make a clean exit from the EU as their party conference gets underway in Birmingham today. And UKIP leader Gerard Batten joins us from there now. Good morning to you. Um, what's the main message that you're wanting to get across with your uh, interim manifesto, policies for the people? Well, um, the main message is that we want to be a populist party in the real meaning of the word, which is that we want policies that are actually popular with the general population so that they'll vote for us. Um, the first and policy will be the primary policy of UKIP for the last 25 years, which is to have a clean, as you said, a clean exit from the European Union. We fear that we're going to be betrayed over Brexit. Mrs May has no real intention of taking us out properly. So I, my job and UKIP's job is to restore itself as an electoral threat because it was that electoral threat that achieved the referendum. Uh, and now we have to put the pressure on to say that either we get out of the European Union cleanly or UKIP will be coming after your seats. Uh, we will be losing people their seats in marginal seats on slim uh, majorities. That's our strategy at the moment going forward. Uh, and I want to build UKIP as a force for the future. I want to point it in the right direction uh, so that it's a real force in politics. And, of course, if we had a fair voting system in this country, a uh, proportional representation system, which is another policy that's, that's in this manifesto, uh, then, of course, we would have had MPs years ago and we would now be a major player in the House of Commons. Uh, we labour under very difficult situation, the first-past-the-post system, um, but we had a real effect without having elect one MP elected over the years, uh, and I want to see us uh, achieving that again and going forward to the point where we can actually get MPs elected to Westminster. Uh, you're saying that you, you see yourself as uh, being a major player on the political stage. Uh, some would say that you're moving towards the, the far right or you're actually courting the far right. How would you address that criticism? Right. Let me address it this way. For the last 25 years, and myself and everybody in UKIP has worked to restore our country's former status as an independent democratic nation that's governed by our politicians, elected by us, sackable by us, in accordance with our traditional laws and customs and constitution. Now, if that makes you far right, then I think uh, whoever thinks that has got a very strange idea about what constitutes far right, far right politics. Well, what about, we are, uh, have bringing, always been a democratic bringing, party. Bringing Tommy Robinson into UKIP. Well, first of all, that's something that isn't going to happen in the near future. The rules would have to be changed to allow that to happen. As I'm on record of saying, I think that that is something that I personally would approve of. But it's a matter for the party. It's their decision. It's not mine. It's, I'm not a dictator. Uh, and I'm going to gauge the mood of the party on that as I mingle around today. I'll be very busy over the next two days talking to many of those thousand people who are coming and see how they feel about it. But it was but your I don't decision to, to attend a, a rally organised right. by the, the Democratic Football Lads Alliance. Uh, their, their Facebook page criticised for racist rants continuously and you spoke on, on their platform, a, a platform after which arrests were made. Yes. And that is that. I, I'm glad you give, that you've raised that because you give me an opportunity to comment on the absolute disgraceful coverage of that by Sky News. When you portrayed that as an anti-Muslim rally, it, what, let me, let me, well, I'm just about to tell you, because it wasn't an anti-Muslim rally, it was a rally on behalf of justice for women and children, victims of sexual abuse that I went along to talk because they invited me. The DFLA actually organised the rally and the people who caused the violence at that, uh, at that meeting, uh, we've had a chance to investigate that and we know the names of those people and none of them were members of the DFLA. They were not followers of DFLA. But, but they you were did interlopers stand, who deliberately did, came in order to cause violence. You did so stand it would on be great stage. if you actually... If, you did stand on a stage and talk about uh, sexual crimes, attributing them to a religion, the religion of Islam. That, that's on, on record. And I'm not the only person to do that, because people who have studied the ideology of the religion, it does, uh, it does actually, traditionally, throughout its history, make sex slaves legitimate. That's possible. Their prophet had that's, sex that's slaves. That's not the ideology so of, there is, of uh, there, there is. That's not yes, the ideology of Islam. Yes, it is. How much do you know about Islam? 
It's in, it's, it's in the uh, Hadith and the Quran. It's a tradition that that's okay to do that. And people take their prophet as the model for all time and a perfect human being. So if he did something, then it's okay for other people to do it. The problem is with the ideology, not individuals. I have never attacked individuals. I always talk about the ideology. And the ideo ideology is the problem. But you're, you're attacking the entire religion of Islam, which... Uh, doesn't uh, well, espouse to, to actually advocate sex before marriage. Um, many uh, attributes. The, the, yeah, the... Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, it, does allow, it does allow people to take, uh, their followers to take sex slaves who are not uh, of the same religion. Uh, kufars, infidels, can be taken as sex slaves. It's one of the conditions uh, of warfare that they have. So it's no good telling me and the world that it doesn't happen because everybody knows it does happen. And as for ideologies, I'm against uh, totalitarian ideologies. I hate communism, I hate Nazism. I don't want to live in any way, shape or form under a totalitarian um, ideology. And if you look at every country in the world uh, where Islam is predominant, they're either very repressive regimes or are they regimes that are in conflict internally. Uh, and you, I think that that is something about... that we have to be very speak... wary of. When you speak about particularly the, the, the situation in Rotherham, and that was something that you spoke about on, on the platform, you isolate that as a, a Muslim crime. You, you never, for instance, speak about uh, the crimes of the, the Catholic Church in terms of sexual abuse of children. Why is it that you don't speak on a broad spectrum? You mm. isolate it to Islam. Well, I'm... I, I'm, I was on there talking about specific victims, and if you read, there's a very good book on this whole subject called uh, Easy Meat by Patrick McLaughlin, which details all of this over about 30 years, 20 or 30 years, and how it's been swept under the carpet. And it is predominantly people who follow that religion who are causing this problem on a national scale, which is the industrialised sexual exploitation for money uh, and for their own perverted purposes. So that happens to be a fact at the moment. I'm happy to condemn paedophilia and child abuse and sexual abuse, wherever it occurs. I don't have a problem with that. As far as I'm concerned, but you, it's a reprehensible but you crime, whoever commits it. And I'm happy to... Well, well you're asking me now, so I'm condemning it. You know, if I'm invited to... Sp okay, I was invited so to speak at that event. I can only go to an event that I'm invited to speak at. Uh, and so I think also, if you, although you have those crimes in other institutions, we know they go on everywhere, they have no ideological justification. They have no basis which people could argue that this is permissible under the, foot, the, under the branch of that ideology that they choose to follow. And your, I know your predecessor, I, you your know, predecessor Nigel Farage, um, took great care to, to make UKIP a, a mainstream party. He has said that you should be advised as to the company you keep. On the platform that you spoke at that rally, he suggests that perhaps you shouldn't be keeping company with the uh, DFLA. What, what do you say to that? What I would say to that is that uh, I, I wonder why Nigel said that, because Nigel is friends with Donald Trump that a lot of people like and call names. Nigel has gone to speak on platforms in Germany with alternative for Deutschland, which a lot of people don't like and call names. And he's entitled to do that because there are democratic parties. And I'm entitled to speak at rallies um, organised by people who believe in democracy as well. So I think that uh, maybe he should be a little bit more careful about criticising But from somebody me, as yourself... Uh, you've, you've he called, has done similar you've called, things. You've called Islam a death cult. Um, do you think you are mm. the, the, the right person to be speaking on such a platform and you're objective about Islam and, and Muslims? Well, why, why, they can invite other people as well if they want to. There's plenty of democratic politicians out there that they can invite. Uh, it depends who would accept that invitation and go and speak for them. A lot of people don't want to address this pro problem because they're too frightened to talk about it. I meet people all the time now. This isn't just in relation to this issue. Uh, but now people are fearful of speaking out because uh, they are losing free speech. It has, can, can have consequences for their jobs and careers. I feel that I have a moral responsibility to say what I think is true because I'm in a position to do it. I'm a leader of a party. I don't need a job next year. I can retire. I can go off and get my pension. There are other people out there who've got jobs and livelihoods and they are becoming increasingly frightened and fearful of even admitting they're members of a political party or stand for Brexit uh, or, or have other views which are perfectly permissible uh, but it's becoming more difficult in our current climate for actually to express those views. We've got uh, police just... forces who can't, too busy, can't be bothered to investigate burglaries but can come around and knock on your door because you say something on Twitter they don't agree with. Well, 
Just uh, one, one last point. For those that, that might say UKIP yeah. is a racist party, uh, I'd just like you quickly to justify these uh, um, elements in your manifesto. You want to repeal hate speech guidelines. You want to repeal the Equality Act of 2010. You want to shut down mm. the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. And you want to shut down the Government Equalities Office. Yeah. That's hardly in keeping right. with uh, diversity yeah. and a multicultural society, is it? All right. First of all, we had perfectly good laws against incitement to hatred, incitement to violence, causing public disorder. The problem with the hate crimes is it's what anybody's perceived notion of a crime is. And it doesn't even have to be the supposed victim. It can be a third party who can say that's a hate crime. Well, that's nonsense. This is kind of totalitarian territory where somebody can say, oh, I think that person is guilty of a crime. Therefore, they're going to be arrested and investigated and possibly charged. Under English law for centuries, you had to be guilty of a specific crime in law, not somebody's opinion of whether it constituted something or not. Well, that is a very dangerous path to go down. And those, we had perfectly good human rights in this country under our own English common law. We didn't need to adopt uh, human rights Gerard. legislation, which came from the European Union, and we've seen the havoc that that is causing. Gerard Batten, thank you very much for joining us. I just want to, to, to make sure that you still uh, stand by your statement that Islam is a death cult. Well, study its history for the last 1,400 years, and if you take an impartial look at it, you might come to that view as well, Gillian. Okay, Gerard Batten, thank you uh, very much for speaking to us this morning on Sunrise.